Are you overwhelmed by the curriculum, curriculum options available? It's this time of the year that we start thinking about next year and get all excited about all the great things that we could be learning and exploring with our children. But sometimes we look around and the options are just overwhelming. It just uh, seems endless. So where do you start? Some of you maybe are just at this point finishing out your year or finishing out a few years. Do you stay with the same curriculum? Do you change curriculums? What's working? What's not working? So many questions. And then our homeschool conferences. So many of them, unfortunately, this year. Well, there are benefits and uh, drawbacks, but some of them are still online. So we don't have the opportunity to wander around the vendor halls and pick up curriculum and just be introduced to lots of different options. I want to welcome you. I'm Diana Rolston, and this is Spark Homeschool Parent. Each week, I bring you conversations about our fears and our questions, our doubts about homeschooling. And I'm really excited about today's conversation. We're going to be exploring curriculum options that are best suited to your children's learning style. And I have the perfect guest with us today. I want to encourage you as you're watching online just to send me a quick note in the comments there. Let me know who's out there, but also engage in our conversations. Like I said, I have the perfect guest who can answer most all of your questions about curriculum choices. And uh, she's happy to research if uh, she's not able to answer your questions. But whether you're watching live or on the replay also, just continue this conversation with your comments below. That would be awesome. This conversation is for you if you're wondering what type of learner your child is. We're going to be exploring the VARC model, which is visual, auditory, reading, writing, and kinesthetic learners. And we're going to be just discussing a little bit more about that. You're going to enjoy today's conversation if you are looking for specific curriculum options that best suit each one of your children. And of course, you are welcome to send in your questions and uh, we'd love to have a discussion about those too. The guest I have the privilege of introducing is a mom of three grown children whom she homeschooled through to graduation. Three of them are, three of her children had learning challenges. So she's particularly attuned to different learning options, different curriculums that are best suited to each child in their learning. She's now blessed with grandchildren. Back in 1994, my guest and her husband, Harold, um, started a company, The Learning House, to meet the growing need for quality educational resources. And that can be found at learninghouse.ca. The actual store building is in Goderidge, Ontario. They provide a curriculum, and have access to 50 different publishers. Actually, they have access to many more than that. Uh, she says hundreds more than that. And it quickly becomes very clear that my guest has a passion to encourage and support families to educate well. I want to introduce you and bring in Louise House. Hi there, Louise. Hi, Diana. Thanks for joining me today. Joining oh, us. I'm really glad to be here. Um, one little tweak. I th thank you for the lovely introduction. But the store is now located in Bradford. Oh, okay. So, um, we used to be in Goderich, and uh, we're no longer, since we no longer own it, it, it actually just moved about a year and a half ago. So yeah. I just wanted to make sure people didn't come looking for it here or they might be disappointed. So. Yeah, we have uh, viewers from all across Canada and the United States. So many may not be familiar right. with Brantford, but that is in the province of Ontario. Yeah. So it's Bradford. Bradford. Yeah. Sorry, I messed it up again. <laughs> okay. okay. I, and also uh, learninghouse.ca. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you started the business with your husband, but uh, recently um, there are new owners there. So that's yeah, exciting yeah. too for you. We're going to be talking about the VARC model of uh, learning styles today. So that's V-A-R-K. 
And that really is just a model of how people prefer to receive information that they're learning and their preference for how they deliver the information that they're learning. That was developed um, in 1987 by Neil Fleming, for those of you that are interested. And just to get an idea, some of you may be interested to delve into this a little bit more. There is a questionnaire, um, just so you can better identify the learning style of your child. There's a questionnaire and online. I'm just going to pull up a couple of those questions so you can get a good idea before we get started. Okay. And this is at uh, the references or the sources at the bottom there. So one of the questions would be, do you, and you'd be asking your children this, do you prefer a teacher who likes to uh, likes to use class discussions on, whoops, sorry, class discussions, online discussion, online chat, and guest speakers? Or would your child prefer uh, overview diagram charts? labeled diagrams and maps or would he or she prefer a textbook and plenty of handouts or field trips case studies videos labs hands-on practice practical um, activities and you can see how each one of those depending on what the answer would be would be one of those uh, visual auditory um, reading writing or kinesthetic. Another question, there's quite a few questions on that survey. Another one would be, after reading a play, you need to do a project. Would you prefer to draw or sketch something that happened? Would you prefer to read a speech from the play? Would you prefer to act out a scene from the play? Or would you prefer to write about the play again? Depending on the answer, we'll give you a, a good idea of the learning style of your child. But when you and I were talking um, over the last couple of weeks, Louise, we discussed that although our children and probably most of us, all of us, have learning preferences, we don't exclusively learn in one learning style. And we both agreed too that we want to, although today we're going to be exploring curriculum that specifically relate to specific learning styles, we do at some point want to introduce our child to all the other, uh, the other learning styles. Because throughout life, sometimes you just don't have the option. We do need to uh, develop. And I know you have uh, similar thoughts about that. In your, and in your children, you've probably discovered that also. Yeah, I, I think too, you know, you, you want to, if you've got one of those learning styles and it's really, really strong, then you do want to, uh, especially in the early years, maybe cater to that a little more. But, you know, as you're saying, moving forward, we need to challenge some of those other areas because if you're kinesthetic and down the road you go to university, um, you're going to be doing a lot of reading and writing. So, you know, we've got quite a number of years to develop those skills, but mm -hmm. they can be developed. Yeah, but uh, yeah, good point. We um, um, want to choose probably when they're young or when maybe learning is difficult. So anyway, yeah. let's get started with some of these. Um, when I first started homeschooling, it's probably the story of many um, families that begin to educate their children at home. I had a very gracious friend who passed on all of the curriculum that she had used for her children, which I felt very blessed to receive. But then I, our first couple of years, I'm not uh, afraid to share, were not happy years. And I think much of it was because I had my children sit, read, and do worksheets. And anyone who's listened know that I have three boys who don't always like to sit, read, and do worksheets. So my first one of my boys, he would prefer to watch a movie. Look, he would take trade magazines and read them at night and take them over to his bedroom and just uh, like drool all over them and learn so much. So 
that's a good indication of a visual, visual learner. So our visual learners learn best by seeing, and they would learn best by pictures, movies, diagrams. And you have a few curriculum that you could suggest specifically for our visual learners. Yeah, so, um, you know, the whole idea of using a video, you know, can really uh, make a difference. And uh, if it's an interesting video, so much the better. So, uh, you know, if, if you have a, a visual learner that is quite academic, something like BJU Press Video, which is very challenging, um, can be really a good choice because BJU doesn't put your child in a classroom when you're doing a video. They actually are doing this in the studio to make things interesting for kids. Mm. So they will be, you know, in early years, they're using puppets and, and other media, you know, to make it interesting. Sometimes they have senior students that will come in. I know my kids used to watch the grammar guys, you know, a couple of university students who came in and did skits about grammar that were totally hilarious and fun, but they were also memorable. And, and so, um, you know, some, some video can be really, really helpful. Um, other things, you know, you talk about using sort of graphics and, and things like that in the early years, uh, things like all about learning and logic of English, they have great, um, visual, you know, high color, not just fill in the blank workbooks, but maybe activity books that include a game or an activity, mm -hmm. um, which sort of goes with your kinesthetic, but it also has this visual component that's really strong. Uh, so I would, yeah, I would think something like that. A lot of uh, Singapore math for math comes to mind because they tend uh, in their standards edition and their US edition in particular, they will actually, instead of using math manipulatives, they actually have graphics of the manipulatives and oh. so the pictures of them. And, and they're not wanting the kids to, you know, you can use the real deal, but the graphics are there. And, and you know, a lot of kids, once they get into the system, if they're a little bit mathy, uh, they can actually at times become independent. What was so, the name of that one again, Louise? Singapore Math. Okay. And there are many, there are multiple editions. Um, I'm, a, I'm a standards person. That's because I've been around for a while. There is a new 2022 edition. I haven't spent much time with it, but um, it's looking good too. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to think other mm -hmm. um, other thoughts. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Exploring creation with mathematics. Maybe you can talk about that one. Yeah. So that's another nice one. Um, uses has really nice color does use some manipulatives enough practice but not too much uh you know we want to keep the workbook stuff under control so uh and and really again you know that visual component picture is great to look at mm -hmm. so you had some uh sorry i'm just looking at your notes uh science um okay yeah um, so science 101 is a is a like video presentation for high school students. Sorry, okay. did I cut you off there. No, sorry. I think I may be a little delayed, but uh, oh, <laughs> keep going. Okay. Uh, you know, master books is another science that I think you know your visual learners would love because they tend to use. Um, high interest, really good looking books, high interest books, not textbooks with their mm -hmm. science program. So a science program might have four different books that you use with it, but they're themed and they're generally, the graphics are great, the information is easy to find. And, uh, and then they do have a study guide that goes with it and you can choose how much or how little you want to do of those worksheets. So a very nice, a nice, really nice option, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things maybe I'll just mention too, one of my kids used to do, because he was a visual learner, and when he got to college, he would actually make PowerPoints of his lectures. Nice. And so he would put the information on top of a picture 
and just he he would be scrolling through that when he was standing in line for lunch or whatever but th those visual cues were really strong for him so yeah just another technique see and that just uh, reminds me again that uh educating our children at home they have such fantastic opportunities to really get to know themselves yes and find out who they are and how they need to learn yeah yeah do you want to move on to the next one sure okay so our next uh learners would be the auditory learners so these uh, learners learn best by hearing information. So that may include, you know, those um, children who just listen to music and then they remember every word. That would include these children. Um, we also have some learners who enjoy discussions and lectures and learn best that way. What curriculum do you have best suited for these children? Yeah, so. Um you know, I don't know that there's a, a lot of things that are written for auditory learners, but over uh, over the last, I don't know, 10 years, a lot of companies have added an auditory component. So while you might use the same product that you might use for a visual learner or one of your reader, writer, you know, the next one's coming, um, you can use the same thing with it, these auditory learners because they have the auditory component. So the things that come to mind for auditory learners, uh, just right off the bat for your elementary students would be things like uh, audio memory products. So these are actually, it's a company and they do math songs. So to learn your math facts, you sing them. To learn your geography or your grammar, you sing it. And there's music associated with it and it provides a good memory tool. Uh, the Charlotte Mason method of home education, where you're doing a lot of read alouds with real books, living books, can be a really good method because kids are just hearing great information in an interesting fashion and, and it's not, it's not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, back to, you know, BJU could work provided you know your academics are because again you've got the auditory as well as the visual mm -hmm. uh, for language arts learning to read uh, i love all about reading i will just mention it over and over mm -hmm. unashamedly. and it is multi-sensory so it has the visual component it has the auditory component and in this case as students are physically moving letters they're actually speaking what they're doing and decoding their words so, you know, it's, it's working with that channel. Uh, the same would be said of logic of English. And uh, so those, you know, for, for beginning reading, those kinds of things. There's other things out there. Hooked on phonics is a big one that uses a lot of music. Uh, sometimes you have to watch with music because it goes so fast that kids mm -hmm. really don't know what they're doing. They can do it, but it, it is, it has become almost meaningless. So it's making sure that it's actually serving a good purpose. Mm -hmm. um, for writing, again, with a video where you've got good audio, you know, essentials in writing uses a short video lesson, and then you go and do your work. So they've been able to hear it as well as see it. The same for Institute for Excellence in Writing. Uh, we have another one, it's a Charlotte Mason style product called Story Starters, where you read the story, um, the beginning of a story to your students, and then they need to finish the story. And, you know, when they're younger, they could do this orally. And when they're older, they could be doing this in a written fashion. So uh, really, really great way to go. Uh, keep going, math. Sure. Uh, math you've got you know again you know right start math you see um math you see has so right start because it's a highly interactive discussion based lesson mm. so it is it uses a lot of uh, it takes a lot of parent involvement but your auditory learners are social mm -hmm. they do want to, you know often want to discuss so so it's, you know, that's, that's very strong. Matthew C has a, a video component 
So, you know, you've got the visual, but you've also got the auditory so that um, that's working. Uh, there are also like with Saxon Math at the upper levels, we have a number, two companies that have actually produced video lessons so they can hear the lesson being taught. Because if you just hand them the book and say, go read the lesson, that's not going to work as well as if they can actually hear someone tell them about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then for science and social, there are just some really great options. So I've always liked Apologia Science, um, both elementary and, and the upper, you know, into high school. And they have audio um, MP3s for, I think, every book. I'm not sure if they have it for advanced physics, but um, pretty well everything else. So you can, uh, you know, your students, you, you can read a the lesson aloud to them, but as they get older and you don't want to be reading the whole biology textbook, they <laughs> can listen to the textbook. And that can make all of the difference. And the same is for, um, you know, in the, in the history, uh, in the history area, a lot of the history programs have come up with this audio component. So mystery of history, story of the world, and then a lesser known one is called History Revealed, which is uh, Diana Waring's uh, history program, which actually teaches every lesson in a four week block and each week is geared to a different learning style. Wow, what a great option. Pretty cool. Yeah. So you can choose to do, you know, the assignments from all four weeks or just focus on, you know, the one or maybe two different learning styles that you would want to. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and she would have auditory audio as well. Uh, from Adam to Us is another phenomenal history program and they've, they've come out with an audio. So it's just really, you know, really, really good. And then for Canadian, because a lot of us are wanting Canadian studies, um, Don Award from Northwoods Press has great courage and conquest, Canada, my country, Canada's natives long ago. All of her products are set up as basically a lesson that can be read aloud or read independently, depending on the age of your student. But that auditory component is, you know, can certainly be accessed and used. Hmm. Oh, that just brings back great memories and sort of our uh, idea of homeschooling when we're reading and our children are all listening and yeah. <laughs> great times, fantastic memories. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. And this is reading, writing. Actually, of my three boys, I do have one son who um, has this as his preference and he would take his textbook I would having two other children who weren't reading writers reading writing learners I would <laughs> get him moving and read to him and all of these things and he would just say and being an introvert can I just take this and he would go down to his bedroom and read quietly so that would be a typical reading and writing learner who preferred to take in information that's displayed as words and text these students also learn by making lists, reading textbooks, taking notes. And I guess that's kind of what we think of as like school. So you probably have lots of options for uh, these learners. You know, it, that, that's kind of what I, I kind of call it traditional. You know, it's kind yeah. of what a lot of us probably grew up with. Um, I only had one that was like that as well. And, you know, I can remember her doing her, her high school chemistry and literally I never saw it other than when I marked it. And half the time by grade 11, she marked it. And at the end of the year, she told me your mark, you know, like, <laughs> but um, she, she was just highly motivated and that was her happy place, mm -hmm. you know, and she, she learned well that way. And so, you know, a lot of products, I would say the, the bulk of what's on the market can be used by these students, you know, but they they are the students that if you give them all about reading where they have to manipulate letter tiles, it just might drive them crazy. Mm. Like they're not necessarily going to like that. 
because maybe they don't need it. Uh, they see it, they know it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I tend to be a bit visual. And so, you know, a, well, not, but or reading, yeah, book work, you know, and, and so giving me a math block, eh, I don't need that. It, yeah, it almost slows them down. Yeah. So, um, you know, all of your alpha omega products uh, for life pack, you know, they have a, you read a lesson and you do your work. And these, you know, reading, writing children just can eat that up. Mm -hmm. um, they, they could do BJU with video, but they might do BJU just with the books and be fine and, and not need to watch the video. And, you know, people say, well, then I spent all the money on the video. Maybe you don't need it for those students. Mm -hmm. uh, Horizons is a workbook based program from Alpha Omega. It's a it's a little bit step above life pack. So, you know, mm -hmm. it could be good uh, for other language arts, writing, grammar, spelling. There's a, a company called Jack Chris and they have three products growing with grammar, winning with writing soaring with spelling they're all your workbook style they can be done pretty independently and you know the right student just charges through them and has a great old time mm -hmm. um most of what we discussed before for science and history can be done by these students so you're for high school your apologia uh you know and your master books those kinds of things because they all do have a reading component with a workbook component, and you can choose how much of the other that you do. Now, I do find that a lot of people that have students like this will come to me and say, in especially in high school, you know, do we really have to do the labs? Mm -hmm. and, and do we really, do I have to make them do the activities? And my answer is always they need to do some. Mm -hmm you know, down the road, this is preparing them for higher learning later, and they'll be expected to have some exposure to that. Mm -hmm. And experience writing labs. I know that's a big yes. part of uh, science, well. post-secondary science programs. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, you know, it is, um, but a lot of times, you know, maybe, well, they just rather watch, you know, see somebody do it, but th there is a, po there is a place for, ensuring that they do experience some things, even though that's not their favorite thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, story of the world, mystery of history from Adam to us, those kinds of things are all will lend themselves to these students. They're just probably going to do them a little more independently. Mm -hmm. They'd rather not have you read it, but they might rather go read it themselves and just work ahead on it. Yeah, perfect. And then uh, we move on to the kinesthetic learners. So those would be those children who want to do every experiment and probably don't want to read about it, but rather want to get their hands uh, right into it and touch it. Two of my boys are very strong kinesthetic learners. And I remember great times when, well, those first couple of years when uh, I wasn't so open to different learning styles. I would, and they just couldn't help themselves. I would find experiments throughout the house, things in my freezer, just because they were curious if uh, if they mix these two things, will it freeze? And how long will it freeze? They were creating their own, just uh, needing to get their hands yeah. on some of these things. Um, as I've shared many times in my talks and Facebook lives, I have uh, one son who is very good at repairing and maintaining small engines. So we have parts and pieces and my son who does electronics, it's all working with their hands. And uh, I see them and I just think, wow, like the brilliance. But when I started homeschooling them and they weren't sitting and reading and filling in those worksheets, I missed out on that brilliance, just identifying it. So. Uh, just encouragement for some of you moms and dads who have children who just don't want to sit down, who want to keep moving, want to learn by touching and doing. It is, these kids are brilliant also. They need to um, have hands-on experience, hands-on activities, and that's the best way that they learn. 
And thankfully, there's lots of options for a curriculum that uh, serve these children well. Yeah, yeah I think I, that, you know, years, years ago, ago, we used to think about math as, as our um, hands-on hands -on programs. But now yeah. there's hands-on programs for just so many different things. And, you know, I can really identify with you <laughs> in saying that, you know, you didn't, you missed out in the early years. And uh, I, I had one that really, really struggled with language arts. And I remember uh, someone you may know, Trix Bradley. Oh, yeah. Uh, saying to me, she, she was a, a good friend of mine. And I was just tearing my hair out because I couldn't, you know, we couldn't get the letters under our belt. And she said, well, why don't you be the letters with your body? Now, that was totally outside of my box. But he made the cutest little T and, um, you know, a great eye. And I would help him if he needed a stick and a ball. You know, we would do this. <laughs> and, um, you know, there. in the end, what we ended up using, just to give you um, an idea of how strong this learning style can be is I found a set of letters that actually had, were plastic and had bumps and you could trace the bumps with your fingers and he did way better if he had them behind his back he could see them and he would feel them and and that he almost learned his alphabet like he was blind but that yeah. sensory touch was so strong so don't underestimate you know, the value of these things. And I think that often God takes us really outside of our box. He doesn't give us students that necessarily learn the way we do. Mm -hmm. And we just want to be cognizant of that fact. And this is where we have to get a little adventurous. Yes. Actually, it's interesting that you say that because many parents who have children who have graduated from uh, the homeschool environment or the, the education at home environment, many of us will say we think we learned way more in those years than we did any other time in our life. And uh, this is a great, that was a great example of that. And so for our kinesthetic learners, yeah, being creative and just- And not being afraid, yeah, just get outside yeah. that box. So. Um, you know, all about reading, I, I keep coming back to that, but in the, the early years, make Play-Doh letters, use sandpaper so they can feel it and trace the letters so there's texture to it, or use a fuzzy fabric where they can, mm -hmm. you know, there's a feel to it. Um, involve their body if you need to as part of that, um, you know, mm -hmm. make game that I know people that have even put letters on cards and thrown them on the floor and say, okay, go jump on the C, go jump on the F, give me a word that starts with F. All those, you know, those are just using a conventional old flash card, but in a different way, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, another new one we talked about when we chatted before, but I haven't spent much time with this one, but I'm very intrigued by rooted, um, rooted in language because it seems to just have so much so many hands-on um, parts to it and in its presentation so you know people might want to take a look at, at that it is a huge amount of stuff to download so that can be a deterrent but i see the fun things that they're doing and i just think you know kids would love it mm. uh, simply charlotte mason actually has a delightful hand or delightful reading uh, program and it's very hands-on too so just things that are going to engage them uh, that way uh, sometimes our kinesthetic learners it's funny that you know they can play with lego but put a pencil in their hand <laughs> and ask them to you know do their printing and that can be a chore mm -hmm. and handwriting without tears is always my go-to uh, they just have wonderful workbooks that uh, for any child that might that might have a motor issue and um the, the the spaces are big it's just it's not overwhelming to look at there's not a lot on a page 
And it's written so right-handed and left-handed learners can use the same book and they can see what they're doing. So mm -hmm. cool. Uh, when it comes to things like writing stories, so we didn't talk about this, but you know, I think back to auditory learners, they can tell you a story. Um, sometimes our kinesthetic learners might rather tell you a story than you know have to put the paper on the pen um, on the put the pen on the paper. But uh, you know, there is a write shop, and this is the junior write shop program. It's highly creative and often has activities to use to spur on writing. Mm. So, um, you know, we talked about story starters where you could read part of a story and they had to finish it. Well, well here they actually will be doing or creating something and, and then they will, you know, carry on with a writing activity, but it kind of gets them started. So I don't know of many sort of hands-on writing programs, but that's one. Mm -hmm. Good to and, know. And, uh, you know, who would have thought we could do spelling with hands-on spelling, but all about spelling? Or if you don't want to use all about spelling, getting a set of, you know, plastic letters, not tubby letters that are big and clunky, but, you know, the nice plastic letters that um, you get a whole bunch of A's and B's and C's, so you're not always running out. And your kids can just take a spelling list and make it on the, on the table. And they yes. can see it and do it and that's uh, avalanche alphabet i think it's called that is available at the learning house so avalanche just disappeared oh whoops. so we have a new one yeah it just in the last little while it just it left and now we have one um from joy notes i think if you put joy notes in the search it would come up and okay it's more it's more letters but i loved avalanche of letters and i was so sorry to see it disappear uh, grammar. Here's another thing. Who would think that we could do grammar in a hands-on way? But Winston Grammar actually does that. And instead of having students diagramming a sentence on a paper, they actually build their sentences with, with cards on the table in front of them with the parts of speech. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's still... Um, it still may not be their favorite subject, but it, it provides an avenue, you know? Mm -hmm. And and these are um, the kids that are gonna like, you know, Matthew C, right? Start math, um, exploring creation with mathematics. Uh, even Horizons Math has a manipulative set that goes with it. And if you have this kind of a student, it's worth investing. In, and having the tools to actually make it work. And if they're too pricey, then we all have beans and raisins and <laughs> gummy bears to, to use. As well. <laughs> um, you know, and the same, like, uh, actually, I, I know kinesthetic children love science experiments. So I think almost everybody, no matter what their learning style, actually does, you know, um, except the, our textbook kids that really just don't want to be bothered, maybe. but um we do have a lovely little science kit is called exploration education and it, you can use it at a junior level or you can use it at a grade seven to nine level and it is a box of experiments that teach you about science there's no textbook you watch a little video you do your lab and you record what you learned in your lab but it's just totally interactive and we've just seen um for kids who have come through, you know, either homeschool or entered homeschool later and who are kind of not sure about all of this and they're not sure about science anymore because it is, hasn't been any fun. Mm -hmm. And they've taken the leap and they've bought exploration education and I, they come back the next year and, you know, oh, science is my favorite subject. So, you know, isn't that, a, it's so exciting when you see that their eyes just come alive and you know they're they're really excited about it so exciting yeah uh, apologia is very textbooky but there's a lot of hands-on stuff in there and it's really really important to do it for your kinesthetic learners and they will learn a lot from it and you will too i know the uh 
The Learning House also sells the experiments. Oh, yeah, we sell a, a lab kit for lab everyone. Kit. Mm -hmm. and, and when we first started with those, like they're not cheap. <laughs> they really aren't. And I thought we will never sell these because it was, you know, $125, $150. But uh, we now have a, a, several companies that sell them and some are more and some are less. But the one company, um, Home Science Tools, has, or no, sorry, Nature's Workshop. Literally, you open the box and you pull out a baggie for the week. Mm -hmm. So this takes a lot of us with kinesthetic learners just got overwhelmed trying to find all the bits and pieces to do everything. And if you're like me and you don't live in town, it means a trip to wherever. And then mm -hmm. in town, you forget to make the stop and science is now derailed for two weeks. So you having, you know, these little packets can just make science happen. And we have found that when people have the kids, they do the labs, they've invested and uh, and it's not onerous to try and find a balloon, a Q-tip and whatever else. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of our history things are tend to be more workbook or, you know, listening, even, you know, listening and then, but, uh, if you look, a lot of times they will have extra activities that are activities. So take advantage of them. And I can tell you, uh, one of our top homeschool memories was when we did Canada's Natives long ago. So it's Donna Ward product. And we decided that we would, I, I got a just like a three by three um, piece of plywood, we put it on a little table, left it downstairs, and we built an Indian village out of plasticine. Not mm -hmm. Okay, plasticine, you can be highly detailed. And this thing, over the months that we did it, it just morphed into we, you know, they made log houses or um, long houses, and they made teepees and sweat lodges and had hunting parties coming in. And uh, it was it was just so much fun. And the, the kids would go down, we'd finish and I'd say, okay, you know, we're done for the bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna stay for a little longer. And that's when you know you've nailed it. Oh, yes. That didn't happen all the time, okay? That, that's the golden <laughs> moment that we treasure in our hearts, right? But uh, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. like, I think, sorry, I think too, that those types of things take a lot of time. So the longer it takes them to, roll out a log and create a building like it's all just sinking in there yeah yeah mm -hmm. and, and then we followed that up a few families we went to a, um, a village a native village you know re, like a museum and we were trying to decide where we would go and all of a sudden we found that our kids had started role playing because they knew what everything was there and so they were just having doing their own thing and it was it was a just a really cool experience mm -hmm. uh, your hands-on learners often like to play games so you know play a game do not underestimate the value of playing games there is so much available and yeah. yes it just uh it's just a fun environment again not every child is going to enjoy that but that is learning too you can bring out games carefully selected games and don't think you're skipping off. Your children might think you are, but <laughs> you know that they're still learning. One of, um, when we first started so long ago, uh, we actually used a, a math program that wanted you to play games instead of doing worksheets twice a week. Ah. And that was just really, really cool. Yeah. And there, if you look carefully, there are sometimes games that will, you can, if you get creative, you can play it at two levels. So you've got mm -hmm. a more advanced child and a, you know, a math game, one child adds, the other multiplies. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're going around the same board, you're doing the same thing, but they're using a different skill. Mm -hmm. So just, yeah. yeah, lots of, um, you know, and even puzzles, like we have puzzles for geography and puzzles for 
um, science. Now you can build the periodic table. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you look at that long enough, you're going to start to remember what's where. Oh, yeah. And so many other great uh, <laughs> skills learned by doing puzzles also. And just the uh, the executive functioning skills of concentration and yeah. <laughs> perseverance and all those other great things. Yeah. My uh, educational therapist coming in here. <laughs> that has been awesome. And you really can... Uh, yeah, just see that excitement and passion when you start talking about curriculum, Louise. <laughs> That's so nice. Um, I Yes, thank you so much for joining us. I just want to remind our listeners that you can watch the replay because there were a lot of things talked about. And you may have friends that would benefit from that also. So uh, pass this on um, so that more and more people can listen and just learn about those curriculums that... We'll just get our children really excited. Uh, Louise, I want to mention um, the Learning House had a symposium last week. Yes. We had great speakers, and some of those talks are still available. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, it was three days, and I think we had 15 or 16 speakers, and just absolutely some great people, um, someone from Apologia and... Uh, yeah, we had, I don't know, so many, um, some creation ministries in international, just lots of great, lots of great speakers to really encourage your heart. Uh, a session on history by Mike Zietzma that would just mm. boggle my brain, but uh, really made me think a lot about history. And now I want to go take all his courses. Uh, <laughs> so the, they, the sessions are available. It was just $15 I th or maybe 20 Early bird was 15, so the full registration is $20. Gives you lifetime access, so oh. and you can watch them them anytime. Would if you need a little inspiration, would highly um, encourage you. We had um, Mrs. Notgrass come to encourage our homeschool moms, and and that was really really special. She was a real treat. Yeah. So uh, just so many really wonderful people that have a passion to come alongside and encourage hearts as well as knowledge. I'll get that link and I'll put it in the comments below uh, the videos. Also, you, I guess as, I'm not sure if it's a profession, but you are a, consult, a curriculum consultant. So yes. some of our listeners may have some more questions specific to their children and you are more than willing and happy to talk to different families. So I'm going to put that link in there also. Yeah, I spend a really good part of my days uh, talking to families, you know, one on one, uh, and I'm happy, happy to do that. Ah, uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing all that you know and uh, getting us excited about the year ahead and all the curriculums and opportunities. So thank you very much for joining. Well, thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Yeah. And yeah, I'll, uh, we hope to see you again. I want to uh, thank everybody for joining us. This has been Spark Homeschool Parent. And I'll be here again next Friday, 1 p.m. And every Friday with another Facebook Live, just exploring some of the fears and doubts, concerns, um, just having conversations every week that I'm sure you can benefit from. Thanks again for joining.